Hey everybody, Fide Master Dennis Monacruz is here, and today we're going to dive into the Neo Archangelsk variation. Now, let me tell you, this is kind of a mess um, to try to prepare, but I think I've managed to uh, to kind of tame it and figure out how to properly categorize everything and uh, present it in a way that I hope will be of use to you guys. So, um, let's first of all discuss what it actually is. So, um, of course, this is part of our series on the Rui, and instead of the old Archangelsk, which begins with bishop to b7, which we looked at in the previous three quick Rui shows and the last show period, um, so that starts with bishop to b7. So the Neo-Archangelsk begins with bishop to c5. And it's sometimes also called the, uh, the Kachiev variation, however you say his name, um, T-K-A-C-H-I-E-V. And um, it's also sometimes mislabeled the uh, Mahler um, and this is not quite right. The Mahler technically is um, the variation where black plays bishop to c5 right here. Now, it can transpose, but it isn't exactly the same thing, and there are certainly lines where these two split off in different directions. So, I mentioned that after bishop to b7, white has um, at least three main moves here. He can play rook to e1. And um, here, there are certainly transpositional possibilities to the uh, the Neo Archangelsk. He can play d3, which is what I recommended as perhaps the uh, the best move, blunting the bishop on b7. And there's also c3, with the idea, of course, of playing d4. Now, what's the idea with bishop to c5 instead? Well, what Black does in this line is he waits to see what White does with his h-pawn in particular, before committing his bishop from c8. So in the um, in the old Archangelsk, we saw that sometimes black puts the bishop on c5, sometimes it goes to e7, and we even saw that putting it on d6 was a possibility in the, uh, the d3 line, for example. Actually, against d3, all three of those moves were possible. Well, here it's the other way around. So this time, black commits this dark square bishop straight away, and then waits to see what he's going to do with his light squared bishop. So what often happens is black quickly plays d6, and if white plays h3, well then, by golly, we play bishop to b7. But if um, white does not do that, let's say he just goes c3 and b4, then black will eventually play <coughs> uh, bishop to g4 instead. So that's the uh, the game here. Now, you might wonder, well, if the bishop's going to go to b7 when white plays h3, then why in the world would anybody play the old Archangelsk variation? And the answer to that is as follows. Uh, on bishop to b7, if white plays c3, which is one of the main moves against the uh, neo-Archangelsk, here, though, black plays knight takes e4. And this works out very well. Um, and you can review the, the, the old show for, for information on that, but on d4, um, black can either play knight a5 or e takes d4, with um, with a fine position. So again, I refer you to that old show for details. The difference here is that after bishop to c5, in case white plays um, c3 here, which often happens, now knight takes e4 is not quite so good. I don't know if it's a mistake, but it's very, very risky. White plays d4, say so takes and takes, and of course white's gaining a tempo here. So the bishop probably needs to go back to e7, to avoid um, trouble on the e file, or at least it's probably the soundest approach for black. So d5, bishop c2, bishop g5, and white has a very strong initiative for his pawn. And, um, you know, a lot of space. Black has problems maybe with the c6 square in case, you know, when he plays d6 at some point. So, um, at the very least, this is a much easier position for white to play. And it's very rare that black will play knight takes e4. So there's uh, a case where bishop to b7 has the upper hand on bishop to c5. So in general, I think bishop to c5 is probably a sounder variation, at least given current theory, insofar as I understand it. But um, but we can still say that bishop to c5 is not quite something for nothing relative to bishop to b7. Both lines, uh, both variations have lines where they come out superior to uh, to the other. All right, well, let's jump into bishop to c5. And I think I'm going to split the material up into uh, to three shows. So on this one, in this one, I'm going to look at lines where white plays a quick knight takes e5. Although I'm not going to look at it on this move, um, but 
and variations where White has first made a, a preparatory move or two. So, um, and I'll show you what the main lines are. And in the uh, the next show on the uh, neo white Jengelsk, I'll look at some lines where White kind of plays more slowly with, with H3. And then in the last one, we'll look at the main line. But I'll at least show you the lay of the land here right now. So now White chooses between C3 and A4. These are really the two serious tries. And on C3, um, not knight takes E4, as I just mentioned, but D6. And this starts us on the path to the main line. All right, so here White chooses between D4 and A4. And again, these both often uh, transpose, but there is an important difference. So let's start with A4, which is probably the most, in some ways, the most accurate way to play. Now, first thing to realize is that if black plays bishop to b7 here, if he's tempted by this, then white should play d3, and now we've returned to a line that I think is favorable for white in the old Archangelsk. Alright, so we've discussed this in some detail already in a couple of, well, a couple of quick Rui shows ago. Uh, instead, black should play rook to b8, and then d4, and we're off and running on the main line, and we'll look a little bit more at this shortly. Um, Okay, so the main move, or an alternative path to the main line is d4. Bishop to b6, and now this is going to be a little parting of the ways here, and I want to discuss three moves here. So, first of all, um, there's a move that may look like a refutation, and if this worked, uh, then no one would play the uh, the neo Archangel, so we'd just be out of business, and that's d takes e5. The point being that after knight e5, White just trades everything and can play bishop takes f7. When black cannot play knight takes e4, this would be a, a huge blunder, because bishop to d5 forks the rook on a8 and the knight on e4, and knight takes f2 would would be worthless. But black can play rook to f8, and um, now, after knight bishop to d5, you just trade and play bishop to b7, and sooner or later, white is going to cough up the extra pawn, Black has pressure against f2 and against e5. Nice pair of bishops, and I would say full equality at this point, with chances for more if black do, if white doesn't play uh, quite well to neutralize the bishops. So d takes e5 really doesn't give white anything. So uh, h3, whoops, h3, that was the uh, the slow approach. We'll discuss that I think next time. This was played in a game, a uh, recent game between Hu Yifan and, and Fabiano Caruana. And many other games too. I mean, it's an important line. So we'll look at this in, in some detail, I think, in the next show. Uh, Caruana drew that game, but only by a kind of a miracle. I mean, he was really in huge trouble. Okay, and then finally, the main move is a4. Uh, here, though, black can play bishop to b7, which I'm not going to discuss any further, uh, except to note that this is a reason why white often plays a4 before d4. Remember, going back here. If you play a4 straight away, now bishop to b7, again, walks into d3. So what black plays rook to b8 here, d4, and we're off to the main line. So that is a little finesse, but it's a reason to maybe play um, a4 first, unless you want to play as uh, Hu Yifan did with h3. Whoops. So that would be uh, the argument there. So anyway, a4, rook to b8. Okay, and so we get to this position via several move orders, as we've already seen. And now um, a b a b knight a three. Sometimes black plays bishop to g four here. Most often, black will castle, and the theory gets um, in tremendous detail at this point. White plays knight takes b five. Black generally plays bishop to g four here, although e takes d four is also possible. So c d and now bishop to g four. Anyway, we will look at all of this in um, a great deal of detail. I think two shows from now, or at least. Two quick Rui shows from now. All right. So um, back to what I wanted to discuss. So I don't want to discuss c3 just yet, but a4. Again, if bishop to b7, d3. So a4, rook to b8. Now, again, c3 is... Well, white can play either a takes b5 or c3. And um, we're going to look at both of these, but we're not going to look at the uh, the absolute main line. All right, so what I do want to contrast are a couple of lines where white goes for, for knight takes e5, as I mentioned. So let's start with c3. So d6, d4, and, and here I want to note a trap. Um, okay, bishop to b6 is the right move. And again, if um, 
you know, I can play knight a3 and head for the main line, or more directly play ab, ab, knight a3. This is the main line again. And there's one other move that we'll have to discuss also, which is a5, which is uh, an invention of Dolmatov's. Um, if black takes this pawn with the knight, it's very, very dangerous. White sacks the exchange and gets uh, tremendous compensation. So black generally plays bishop to a7 here. Well, that might lead you to wonder, well, why not play bishop to a7 immediately? Save a tempo. Well, it loses, that's why. <laughs> a takes b5, and now if rook takes b5, bishop to a4, and if rook b6, d5 wins. While if a takes b5, little puzzle for you guys, white's move and win here. What should you do? Well, if you said d5, you went astray. This does give white an advantage. However, black has the nasty rook to a8, which minimizes the damage. After d takes c6, there's bishop f2 check. And at least materially speaking, black is okay. It's a rook and a pawn for two minor pieces. White is better, no question. His minor pieces are very good here, but um, it's not completely winning. Whereas after the correct move, bishop to d5, black can just call it a day. It's all over here. So that's why not bishop to a7. All right, so bishop to b6 is the move, and um, okay, and this, as I said, is just um, taking us in the direction of the main line. So what I want to look at here is knight takes e5, and a takes b5, a takes b5, knight e5. Again, of course, c3, and we're back to the main line once again. So let's start with knight takes e5 here. Okay, knight e5, d4, takes, takes, d6. Um, here, white has a couple of moves, um, f4 and bishop to f4. And probably could play a takes b5 as well, and that'll just transpose to the other line that we'll look at. So bishop to f4 is played earlier this year, this year being 2012, for those of you who were watching this show in a later year. Uh, this was played in Kamsky Karawana, which was drawn in 84 moves. But I'm not going to say anything about that game. Uh, I'll leave that to you to explore, since f4 is the main move. All right, knight to c6. And here, almost everyone plays queen to c3. But queen to d3 was played in a recent game, and it turned out pretty well. So let's start with queen to c3, which is the uh, the standard move here. And uh, it's been played in a lot of high-level games recently. All right, knight to e7. Now, here, strangely, in the position after a, b, a, b, white almost always plays e5. And it's the computer's recommendation here as well, but for some reason people don't play it. And I'm not sure why. Uh, I tried to, to kind of figure it out by comparing some lines to the computer and, and I was unable to. So if um, one of you is a specialist in this or, or has some other materials and knows the answer, you can let me know, but I couldn't discover it. But I'll give some examples of what goes on here. So um, let's take a quick, well, we'll come back to this, I think. So let's start with uh, F5. This was played in a game between uh, the young, talented Grandmaster Salgado Lopez and um, the former FIDE world champion uh, Kazim Zhanov in uh, Melilla, or Melilla, I think it's probably Melilla, in 2011. So that game continued castles, and then here Salgado Lopez played queen to e1. But bishop to h6 is a kind of a tricky move that uh, merits a quick look. White just wants to play rook to f3 and rook to g3 or queen g3 or maybe rook f3 and then in some cases even queen takes f6 might be possible. Not to mention bishop g7 and then rook to g3 check. Well, black is probably best served by just sidestepping um, immediately with king to h8 and then playing knight e to g8. So that takes care of uh, shoring up the knight <coughs> Excuse me on f6 while further attacking the bishop on h6. White should play bishop to g5 now, I believe. But after bishop b7, hitting e4, knight to d2, and then c5, I believe black has an edge with pressure against e4 and the chance to send white's bishop into an early retirement with, with um, c5, c4. Black is probably slightly better here. So I think Salgado Lopez's choice was better. Queen to e1. Well, uh, Kasim Jana played bishop to b7, and after queen h4, took on e4. Um, the position is, I think, roughly equal and, and very complex, though. Uh, play continued knight to c3, takes, takes. Here, queen to d7 is certainly possible. 
But um, yeah, three d seven is fine. Kasim Jadov played bishop to d five. F six, knight g six, queen h five takes. And um, here, f g might be a more accurate move order. But after c b, rook e eight, f g seven, we come to the same thing. Uh, the position I think is roughly equal here. Maybe Black should play queen to d seven. I think he played rook to e five. Anyway, Black did go on to win, but uh, I, I don't think. I wouldn't say that he's better at this point. He just managed to outplay his opponent. Um, by the way, here, okay, remember I said f takes g7 may be more accurate because after rook e8, uh, after cb3, instead of rook e8, g takes f6 might be worth considering. I mean, it looks a little bit ugly, but uh, perhaps it can be done. Anyway, um, f5 is rare, but but may be very interesting. I mean, it's definitely sharp and, and puts black to the test. And uh, not all of your opponents are going to defend as well as Kazim Zhanov did, so it might be a good practical choice. Okay, um, another move is queen to d3. And this seems kind of funny. Queen to c3 first and then queen to d3. Anyway, from here, black castles. Uh, white can play a, b5 now, which will transpose into lines where white played a, b several moves ago. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, knight c3. And here... White has tried, or sorry, Black has tried both c5 and b4. And I think both lines are okay. Uh, let's start with b4. So after b4, e5. Nice sharp move. Bishop f5, queen a6. Um, in a game share of Leko, Leko played knight to d7. And he did go on to win, but many, many moves later. Um, and here I think White is doing well. So ed, bc, de7, queen e7. And in the game, white played b takes c3, but I think queen to c4 gives white a clear edge. So um, this would be my recommendation here, and so I would not recommend following in Leko's footsteps with knight to d7. Instead, I would suggest playing d takes e5, which has not been tried yet. So um, the main line of my analysis goes like this. Rook to d1, knight d7, knight e2, rook b6, queen c4, bishop e6, queen e4, and now... Uh, a very nice little little combination by black. So knight f6, rook takes d8, and now not knight takes e4, which is playable, but rook takes d8. And uh, the problem is that white's queen is very short of squares. If he, goes, if he takes on e5, then he walks into rook to d1 check, king f2, knight to g4 check, and then knight takes e5. So what he's got to do here is play queen to f3. Well, even here, the queen is not completely safe. Rook to d1 check. And here, if king to f2, then e4 is unpleasant. The queen can't go to e3 because of knight to g4, so that leaves g3, but now e3 check is winning. If um, if king takes e3, there's knight f5. If queen takes e3, there's knight to g4. And after bishop takes e3, even better than knight to e4 check is rook takes a1, and black is winning here. I mean, he's doing materially fine already with uh, two rooks for a queen and a pawn, but the white king is in a lot of trouble. The black queen, uh, the white queen is in a lot of trouble, so black is winning. So back here, the right thing for white to do is just give up the queen straight away. And after these exchanges, the position is even. Of course, if f e, then rook to d1 check. So uh, that would be my cure here. So I think b4 in this position is equal if you try my, my novelty DE. At least that's what the best I can do at the moment. All right, C5 is also good, though, so there's nothing wrong with this either. This was played in a Spindler Caruana game, but here I think white maybe has a little edge. A, B, A, B, knight B5, knight E4, queen E4, rook B5. I think um, Spindler played rook to A7 and maybe had a very slight pull, but couldn't do too much with it. Queen D3 is another possibility. So you could try this. But um, in the game, it was drawn. This is from Amsterdam. I think one of those experience versus youth events. And um, like I said, drawn in about 41 moves. So another 24 moves or so. So at the moment, at least if my novelty holds up, B4 would be the superior choice, slightly. But maybe you should trust Caruana rather than me. Uh, anyway, though it's a couple of years old. Anyway, um... Let's see, what do we want to look at next? We want to examine... <coughs> yeah, we want to look at Queen of D3, my proposed novelty here. Um, 
or no, so not, not like novelty, but this is um, novelty by Saba Balo. So the game went queen d3. Oh, oh, right. Now I remember what I wanted to do. Sorry. Okay, it was queen c3, knight e7, and then here e5. Right, this is what I wanted to take a look at. And though before we look at this, let's take a look at the following. So a takes b5, a takes b5. Okay, knight e5, knight e5, d4 takes, takes, d6, f4, knight c6. Okay. And we'll discuss queen d3 later. But queen c3, knight e7. And here, um, various moves have been tried, but the most common move at this point is e5. Whereas it's never played in the other position, which is really strange. Anyway, um, here play continues knight e4. Uh, queen f3 is an interesting move, but queen e1 I think is the, the main or maybe universal choice. And now black has played both d5, but primarily knight to c5. <coughs> Bishop to a2. And now um, the move is castles. B4 looks pretty natural. To uh, well, you'll see. If after castles, white plays b4. So we'll come back to that in a moment. So you might think, well, why not play b4 here? And the answer is that f5 is quite strong and um, threatens to just rip open the black king side. So white's a little bit better here, and black is better served by just getting out of the way straight away. Well, from here, as I said, b4, and now black um, can choose a couple of. Uh, between a couple of options. Knight a4 has been the main try at, at higher levels, but d takes e5 is quite interesting as well. It hasn't been tried really in high level games, but uh, it seems to it seems to work out tactically. The first and basic point is that on b takes c5, queen d4 check, bishop b3, queen a1, there doesn't seem to be any way to try to take advantage of the black queen's position. I, I think black is just winning here. I mean, knight c3 is the only way to quote-unquote trap the queen, but then black just trades queens, and he's up the exchange in a pawn. White has a little compensation, but nowhere near enough for three points worth of material. So after de, bishop to b2 is better. Now knight a4, bishop b5, knight c6, and black has drawn three out of three games here, though admittedly not at the GM level. So... I'm not sure that that's necessarily a strike against this. This looks like a, a very reasonable way for black to continue. Um, and perhaps, you know, it's been um, developed by computer use, whereas uh, white is trying other other ideas um, nowadays. Well, the old GM games that we're looking at here uh, are indeed that, old. So, anyway, one of them is uh, an Adam Shirov game played in Heraklio in 2007, and that continued after knight to a4, knight c3, takes, takes, and here I think white is slightly better. So d takes e5 would be my would be my recommendation here as a, a better choice. All right, so after queen c3, again, white has a little edge, but it's hard to make much. It's kind of like um, the Svidler Karawana game that I mentioned before in a different line. So white's got a little pull, but turning it into something serious is, um, is not so easy. Now, uh, d takes e5 is played in the game. The computer, I think, or no, it's not the computer, it's uh, Josh Friedel, sorry, uh, played rook to b6. And uh, won a game, though not against uh, another grandmaster a few years ago, but this seems to have a, a flaw. e6. f takes e6, bishop to b2. Okay, rook f6, <coughs> queen d3, rook f7, f5, another strong move. Knight takes f5, rook f5, ef, and now uh, not bishop f7. After king f7, queen c3, uh, black should play queen e7. Very good move. And in this position, it seems to be equal. But back here, white should play rook to e1, just building up the pressure. And now after queen f8, take. Okay, if queen f7, then queen g3 is winning. The idea is to play rook to e8 check. And uh, also, bishop takes g7 is a big threat, because queen g7, rook e8 check. King f7, rook e7 check, wins the queen. So king f7 is forced, bishop d4, queen b3, and then bishop c5, and uh, white is going to regain his material, but the main thing is that uh, the opposite color bishops very much favor white because he's got the attack in this position, and black's bishop doesn't really help very much in the defense. So, uh, rook to b6, I think, is 
is not a, not the best move. So better is um, Shirov's d takes e5, bishop b2, queen d4, takes, takes, takes. And now I think a very good move by Shirov, bishop to e6. Uh, getting rid of white's bishop here. It looks funny at first because black is taking on this isolated pawn on e6, but it's very easy to defend. Um, and it, it really neutralizes white's pressure. So after bishop c5, white had a very small edge, but it wasn't even nearly enough. So here's how the game went. Rook f to e8, and Adams found nothing better than just taking rook a6, and then c5, another good move. Takes rook c8, c6, rook e to c7, and then we just had liquidations, and uh, the players agreed to withdraw already at this point. So nothing really serious here. All right, back to this position. Okay, I mentioned queen d3 is possible. This was tried by Nidich against um, Leko in 2010, but we'll, we're going to look at it in the non-AB version. Um, also, I want to look at e5, so let's do that first. So c3, <coughs> d6, uh, sorry, knight takes e5, knight e5, d4, takes, takes, d6, f4, knight c6, queen c3, knight e7, okay, and now e5. What about this? Um, why is no one playing this move? Well, I don't know. So knight e4, queen e1, knight c5, bishop a2. And perhaps the thought was that black could take the um, the a pawn. So I would note, first of all, that if black plays something normal like castling, then just a, b, and we transpose to what we were just looking at. So there's no problem for white there. Secondly, um, the captures seem to be fine for white. So if b takes a4, then f5 again, and then bishop to g5, and this looks pleasant for white. Um, certainly white's, or black's extra doubled a pawn plays no obvious role here. And even worse for black is to play knight takes a4. f5, castles, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, rook e8, and now white is, is just winning. Um, bishop f7 is pretty good. This is clearly better with f6, and black has to play very accurately here not to just get obliterated. So knight c5 is the right move. And takes, 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 takes. <coughs> and here, white is clearly better. And I would go through that more slowly, except that white has better than bishop f7. Just knight to c3, threatening knight to d5. So let's say black takes. Okay, queen takes. Things like f6 are, are certainly on the cards here, or just building up with rook a to d1, rook f to e1. It's a horrible position for black. So d5, e6. If f takes e6, then f6 is just annihilating. So this is no good. Threatening f7 check. Both because of the rook and, of course, if the knight moves to win the queen. So f6 is forced. Now bishop to g3, hitting c7. And here, black can hardly move a thing. He's up a pawn, but his position is horrible. And white can just build and eventually crash through. So this should be avoided by black at all costs. Well, maybe not all costs, but at, at great cost, because this is horrible. So e5, I think, <coughs> while never played here, is perfectly good, and maybe even sets a little bit of a trap. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about, and I think the last thing I want to talk about, is queen to d3. So this um, this might be the, the, the route to some advantage for white. So this was played in a game between Bolo and uh, Jan Gustafsson in Austria earlier this year in 2012. So it continued castles. Knight c3, knight to b4, queen to d2. Um, actually, yeah, maybe here black can equalize. So in the game, Gustafsson played bishop to e6, and after this exchange, and then knight takes b5, nice little shot, knight c2, queen c2. Uh, of course, if a, b, then queen takes b4. So knight c2, queen c2, takes, takes, and now a5, white had some edge. And he went on to win, actually, very comfortably here. So I'll just show you the remaining moves pretty quickly. So c5, and now e5, breaking up black's pawn structure. Knight e5, queen e4. d e, queen e5. So there's pressure against e6. And there's still pressure against it. And, um, okay, knight f4 is possible, but then, you know, c5 drops and black still has lots of weaknesses. Uh, white would trade the, the bishop first, of course. So uh, rook a8, rook e6, knight f4 takes, takes, rook c6. And with even material, you might think, well, it's a rook ending, black should draw, but 
It's not so simple. Rook b6, and now a6. And this pawn is a terror. And in fact here, yeah, it was already time to give up after this move. So a um, very easy win by, by Bolo, or Balo. Not sure how to properly enunciate the syllables there. <coughs> However, instead of Gustafsson's bishop to e6, it might be better to play b takes a4. Now it's a little bit ugly looking, obviously, to isolate the uh, the pawn on a6 like that. But, you know, just as concrete as they say, and this might be just one such instance. So bishop to a takes a4, bishop d7, and now if e5, then takes, 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 knight to d7, knight to e4, and at first glance it looks like white should be much better. So uh, a6 and c7 are weak, and white's got a su superior looking minor pieces. And for instance, after knight takes c2, there's rook c4, the knight's trapped. If he plays rook takes b2, no problem. Rook c7, rook e5, uh, knight e5, bishop c3, forking, rook b5, and it looks like black survives because bishop b5, rook e5, and the rook hits the knight. But white has one more little trick, knight to d6. And then bishop takes e5, and then rook takes c2, and white is winning here. But here, black can survive with a5. So this is <coughs> the key move in this variation. And after rook takes a5, knight c6, rook a6, knight d takes e5, bishop c3, rook f to e8. Position is close to equality. I think the computer calls it equal. I think white still has some chances for an edge, as I, I think his, he has the superior minor piece with the bishop, and I think the uh, the queenside majority could come in useful, but still, it's it's uh, not much. It's a little something, though. All right. Well, that, I think, is maybe black's best bet in... Um, in this variation, it does feel suspicious. Like maybe there could be some other tries. Maybe you could play bishop to b3 here. So um, you know, I'm not not positive that that was the only try that White's got. But at any rate, it looks like queen to d3 is a, an interesting move that uh, merits merits some further consideration. So these lines with knight takes e5, with or without a takes b5 thrown in, are definitely important. They're not maybe considered the absolute most testing lines, but they're, they get, get worked out on, uh, very, in, in very high level games. So if you play this with, with black, you should know it. And if you, you play it with white, or if you're interested in facing this with white, um, or, sorry, if, if you play this with white and, and have to face it sometimes, it's worth considering this too. Uh, especially as it might be a little bit less well known to black players than the main line, or the absolute main line that I kind of, um, pointed to the beginnings of earlier in the, in the video. Okay, well next time we'll look at uh, the slower lines and other side lines um, a la uh, the Hu Yi Fan against Karawana game. And then in the show after that, <coughs> we'll look at the absolute main line. All right, so I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.